Good evening, everybody. We're in the lesson of the Peticha L'Chochmata Kabbalah. First of all, I want to make sure that you receive the new drawings. Underneath my picture, there's a link. And from that link, you can download the new drawings. I sent you two drawings. Let's look at the drawings before we learn the actual text. Please download the drawings. What do we see here? In drawing number three, we see here a spiritual level. Every spiritual level is comprised of a head, body, and end. Rosh Toch Sof. We see on the right side of the drawing, it's written Rosh Toch Sof. Head, middle, and end. The middle and the end describe two parts of the body. Like in material reality, a person has a head and a body. The body is divided. Now, why do we need a head and a body? Because each spiritual level needs a planning and a putting into action. If, for example, we take the example of the host and the guest that we talked about in 15, the guest deflects the host, and through this the guest becomes a giver, and the guest decides that they are able to eat the meal. But today we're going to add another detail. And this detail is that the guest doesn't eat the entire meal, but eats some of the meal. Why? If the guest eats the entire meal, it becomes revealed that the guest is really using a type of tactic. The person deflected the host, but really wants to eat everything. The point is that really the embarrassment doesn't go away if the person wants to receive. It only goes away if the guest wants to give. The question is, if the guest can eat the entire meal in order to give pleasure to the host? No. Because don't forget that there is mixed up here two different forces. One force is the guest's appetite and hunger, desire to receive. The other force mixed up here is, is the embarrassment that causes the guest not to want to receive the meal. But the guest wants to eat only in order to give pleasure to the host. If so, then we see here in the drawing number three, we see in the head aspect there's two parts. The right part is direct light, and the left part is returning light. Please download the drawings through the link and it's worthwhile to print them. What is direct light we learned? Light that's drawing forth from the Creator to the created being. So we see here Keter Chochma Bina, Ziran Pin and Malchu. What we learned in number five. Afterwards, when the light arrives to Malchut, the Malchut is called mouth, the mouth of the head. And above it is a Masach. What's the Masach? The power of her deflecting the light. The hard decision she makes not to receive the light. And then we have on the left side, the returning light that goes from below to above. From Keter to Malchut. So this represents the deflection of the light. We could add here that since it says that Malchut 
is called the mouth, the peh, because all of these sfirot are aspects of the head. So we could add to the drawing that the keter is the skull, chokma is the eyes, bina ears, zeran pin is the nose, the parts of the head. And Mahud is the math. So therefore, in drawing number three, we see here the direct light, which is the Balabayit wanting to give the light, which is the which is God, Kodesh Baruch Hu. God wants the created being to receive and shines the light the pleasure, whether it's in physicality or in spiritual pleasure. And then the masach that is on the machut of the head deflects the pleasure. And then it becomes revealed the returning light. Now, the guest that deflects the giving of the balabayit, of the host, transforms to be giver. If so, then the guest can already receive. But the guest decides that if it receives all of the meal, it won't be able to stop um, oneself from receiving in order to receive. So therefore decides to receive only part of the meal. Therefore the guest decides to receive only part of the meal. Not the whole meal, because if the guest receives the entire meal, it would be for their own self-benefit. So all of this is called the head. What is the head? The planning. Malchut deflects all the light. And then she determines what amount of the meal she can receive in order to give and how much would be for her own self-benefit if she received it. And the part of the meal that she would receive only for her own self-benefit, she decides not to receive. Afterwards, there is a drawing forth to the body. Body means putting into action. So the body is divided into two, into the middle and the end. The part that she decides she's able to receive in order to give is called the toch, the middle. And there she receives the light, she receives the pleasure. And the portion that she determines that if she receives will be for her own self-benefit. She decides not to receive. And that's called the sof, the end, because it makes an end on the light. I'm reminding everybody that's joining to download the drawings from the link below. Now, underneath the entire level, this whole level is called a partsuf. Beneath the entire level is siyum raglim, the end of the feet. There, there's nothing. Empty, vacated space. There's nothing there. There's no work, no work of receiving in order to give, no work of receiving, there's nothing there. Our physical body draws forth from this spiritual reality of body and head. Therefore, also our body is divided by the belly, from the point of the belly button and above is our more refined organs. What's called in the Zohar the life organs, the lungs, and similar. 
And from the taborim below are the lower organs, which are called the organs of digestion, and the sexual organ, the legs. That's drawing number three. If something's not understood in the drawing, please ask. The Rebbe says that the light is always drawing from Keter, which is that is God's desire to give goodness to creation. Go through Keter Chochma Bin Ezer Anpin to the vessel, which is the created being. And then Malchut deflects the light. The Rebbe says we'll now go on to drawing number four. In drawing number four, there's two parts. The right part is like drawing number three. There's no difference. We see the direct light coming from above to below, returning light being deflected from below to above, what we learned. We have the malchut here that is unifying, malchut mizdaveget. Then we have the body and the end, and we have a malchut that is ending, malchut misayemet. This is a general drawing. It's not even written the sefirot inside. Now the left side of drawing number four is a little more developed. Pay attention. Before we learn the left side, we'll say something else. When the light draws forth to Malchut, the Malchut deflects the light. That's called the returning light that's deflected. Simply the same light that shines to Malchut as direct light, she deflects it. This deflection is called work. We need to remember well that Malchut is the big desire to receive, the maximum desire to receive, and she very much wants to receive the light. And even though she has this great desire to receive the light, she deflects the light. And this is work. In the drawing, we don't see the work, but we need to depict to ourselves that here at the Malchut of the Rosh, the Malchut of the Head, is spiritual work. Now, that through this great spiritual work, the Malchut merits to a reward. What's the reward? The reward is the desire to give. This means the created being from the side of its nature is only the desire to receive. It's not revealed in the created being any desire to give. But through this work that it's doing, receives a reward. The reward is called desire to give. This reward is also called returning light, or chozer. Why is the desire to give called returning light? Because it comes through this that she's returning the light. So, therefore, the desire to give is also called returning light. Pay attention. In Talmud Eser Sfirot, it brings 12 types of returning light. And here in the Peticha Lechokhmat Kabbalah, of course, we're not going to learn all that. We're learning here two. Not twelve, but two. Which two? Simple. What we have in the right side of the drawing, it's written the returning light that's deflected. That's one type, the first type. Simple, the malchut deflects the light. The guest says to the host, I don't want to receive the meal. Deflects the urging of the host. That's the first type. Now we're saying something new that we didn't say yesterday. What's the new thing? 
that Malchut receives a reward from her great work. The reward is desire to give, which she didn't have before. What did she have before? A big desire to receive. She made out of it a masach, meaning she decided not to make use of it. But desire to give she didn't have. Making a masach on the desire to receive is called going away from bad. But doing good, she doesn't have. The doing good is the reward. That is to say that we can differentiate in the equating the characteristic to the Creator to two. One is that in the same way that the Creator doesn't want to receive, we also don't want to make use of our desire to receive. That's the returning light that's deflected. The second is the way that the Creator wants to give, I also want to give. This is called the returning light that clothes. A second type of returning light. We see this on the left side of the drawing. We don't have only we don't have only the desire to receive that's deflected, but we also have the returning light that clothes. I'm reminding everybody that's coming in. First of all, first of all, welcome. And second of all, please download the drawings at the link, the link that's underneath my picture. And it's worthwhile to print them. Why is it worthwhile to print them? So that you can write on them things that aren't written. So this desire to give is called the returning light that clothes. What does it mean to clothe? To receive. We explained yesterday that the concept of to clothe means to receive. The guest with all of its great hunger and appetite, but is not able to receive the meal. Why? Because it's embarrassed. But after going through the process, that everything transforms, where the guest is now the giver and the host is the receiver, so the guest can now receive the meal. But in spiritual terms, this is called clothing. The vessel is able to clothe the light. It's able to receive the light. Why? Because it wants to give. If it doesn't have this force of returning light, then it doesn't have a vessel to receive the light. But if it has this returning light that's called the returning light that clothes, meaning it has the desire to give, wants to give to the Creator, then is able to receive the meal. That's called the returning light that clothes and is then able to receive the light. Is this clear? If not, then ask. The Rebbe says that the Malchut is doing a lot of spiritual work not to receive the light. It's not simple to overcome the desire to receive and to deflect the light. The Malchut is doing a big work. Through this big work, the Malchut receives a reward. This is what the Baal Sulam is saying. That the source of all of our spiritual work, of serving God, or inner work, is all rooted in making a Masach. That the source of all the spiritual work is making a Masach. Why? 
Why? Because the Masach expresses that even though the desire to receive is great, there's a decision not to receive the light. And the root of all of the reward is the returning light. Pay attention. In the spiritual realms, the reward isn't receiving the light. The reward is to attaining the desire to give. In the realms of the other side, the reward is to receive the light. In spiritual realms, the reward is to attain the desire to give. The reward is to receive having love for others, which is something that we don't have from our nature. So what's a reward? My Rabbi would say, what's a reward? Something that I don't have. I don't have money. So I go to work, and I'm given something that I don't have. But then I have money. Otherwise, I wouldn't go to work. When there's something that I can't attain on my own, so a person does work, and from the work they receive what they didn't have. It's the same thing here. The created being does spiritual work, does work, to attain something that it doesn't have. It doesn't have love for the other. It doesn't have it. And through the work, it's given a reward. What's the reward? The ability to love one another. That's the spiritual reward. So Rabbi is saying, don't ask now about Corona or yeah. about North Korea, but ask about what we're learning about. Someone's asking, but you said in the earlier lessons, gave an example about making a a plans on paper and then putting it into action. Rabbi is saying a person is putting on paper where they want to build the house. That's when it's just on paper, it's forbidden to learn Torah where the bathroom will be. According to Allah, it's permitted. Only when there's actually a bathroom, then a person can't learn Torah in the bathroom because it's not honored to the Torah. Not only is it forbidden when they're in the bathroom to bring a holy book there, but even, but even to think on Torah is forbidden because it's not in honor of the Torah. But all the time that the bathroom's only in thought, only on the paper, so it's not actual. So here there's a question. So why in the head aspect of the spiritual level it's already forbidden to receive? Because it's only thought. The Rebbe answers that it's this is the planning of what will be forbidden to receive. It's the planning. Only in the body does this actually come into action. It's only in the body that it actually receives in actuality. And so that's the place that it to flex the light in actuality. In the head, it's all still in the framework of planning. The Rebbe's asked another question. If it's possible through the desire to give to nullify the desire to receive, or there needs to be first going away from the bad and then doing good. The Rebbe says this is the progression in the spiritual realms. First a Masach, and then returning light. There can't be first returning light, and then a Masach. 
First the craving being deflects the light. And then as a result of this, attains the desire to give, which is called returning light, that clothes. When we're speaking in terms of spiritual work, we can talk about the opposite. For example, if a person is connected to a depiction of having a muna, belief in the exaltedness of God, then this depiction of the exaltedness of God or the exaltedness of their friends arouses in a person love and gives the person in a tangible way to feel the greatness of others, gives the person the ability not to act in relation to others in a way of receiving, but only in a way of giving. So speaking in the way of spiritual work, it seems like it's the opposite. But we need to know how does a person attain the awareness of the exaltedness of God through emuna, through belief. That even belief we need to attain from God. But when we do work from our side, when we make effort from our side, then God gives us the reward. The reward is called belief, amuna, and loving others. Belief and love of others. There's a question if we're able to make decisions in our mind, but then not be able to make those decisions come to fruition. The Rebbe says, of course. That's called in spiritual terms the breaking of the vessels. When the body doesn't put into action what was decided in the mind, that's called the breaking of the vessels. The Rebbe says, now let's look at the, at the left side of drawing number four. Pay attention now. The direct light shines. In the right drawing, there's no details, just the returning light. But in the left drawing, there's already details. Someone is joining, please download the drawing. The direct light contains 100% and divides into two. Inner light 10%, surrounding light 90%. What's inner light and what's surrounding light? The part that the created being decides based on their feelings, that they're able to receive in order to give, decides to receive. That's called inner light. That's the 10%. 90% the pleasure is too big and the created being feels that if they receive this pleasure it'll be for their own self-benefit so it decides not to receive it so therefore it's called surrounding light now the returning light that clothes which is desire to give of the created being Close on who? On the inner light. You can see the arrows from the returning light that clothes to the inner light. Meaning, the desire to give of the created being clothes in its planning 10% of the divine light. This is to say, I'm returning again, the guest that decides that it will eat from the meal in order to give pleasure to the host. But if the guest will fall on the entire meal, eat the whole meal, they'll 
fall to a level of receiving only for their own self-benefit. So decides to go in a balanced way. The desire to receive wants to receive everything. And the desire to receive that wants to receive everything is in harmony with what the host wants. The host wants the guest to receive everything. But the, ho- but the guest is embarrassed. So the guest decides to receive a little bit. A compromise, the middle column. What it's able to receive in order to give it will receive. And what it can't receive in order to to give, it won't receive because of its embarrassment. So this draws forth from the spiritual realms, meaning that there comes 100% of the light. There's a deflection of all 100% of the light. This is the right drawing. The returning light that's deflected is a deflection of all the light. This deflecting of all 100% of the light comes first of all to prove to itself that it's able to give up on everything. Needs to prove to itself that it's able to give up on all the light. This is work. Now, as a result of this work, there's a reward, which is the desire to give. So now, goes and measures, determines what part of the light I'm able to receive in order to give, and what part no. So the returning light that clothes, that's called the desire to give, decides to receive 10% of the light. And 90% it will leave without receiving. And afterwards it does this in actuality. The drawing forth to the body is called putting into action. So we see the bodies divide into two parts. Toch and Sof, middle and end. In the middle is the desire to receive that's fixed. This is 10%. 10% of the desire to receive is able to receive 10% of the light. This is the inner light. Afterwards, underneath the tabor, underneath the machut that's ending of the middle, there's a desire to receive that's not fixed. This is the 90% that it doesn't receive. And therefore the light is outside. As it says here, or makif, surrounding light, outside of the vessels. 90%. This is the percentage of the light that was meant to be received, but determined it was not able to receive. Here it's described the system of every spiritual partsuf. Every spiritual level is built in this way. This is called a zivug dehaka'a, a unification of hitting. That means haka'a, hitting, is, is the action of the masa. It's deflecting the light. Say, I don't want to receive deflecting everything. And afterwards, by this hitting, deflection, there becomes revealed the desire to give. And then the created being is able to experience some of the light. And that's called zivug, unification. So it's called a zivug de haka'a, a unification from the hitting, a unification that comes from the deflection. The ability to receive the upper light and the pleasure comes from the trial of the deflection, the light shining and then giving up the light.